<laughs> I'm warming up. <laughs> it's slalom. Don't knock over the bikes. Hey everybody, I'm Mike Levy and welcome back to another field trip review series where we pit 10 bikes against each other in a back-to-back -back testing format. And while the last field test was all about carbon fiber electronics and the high price tags that come with that stuff, this time around, we're talking value-minded trail bikes. And I'm Sarah Moore. Our stable includes five value hardtails, all that cost less than 1,700 US dollars. We've also got five trail full suspension bikes that cost between $2,300 and three grand. But don't worry, we're still gonna have plenty of reviews of those $10,000 dream machines. But I bet I could sum them up right now. They're gonna be really damn good. That's true, but you know what? Your job is a whole lot harder if your budget is 1100 US dollars, which is what this Canyon Stoic 3 retails for. For that price, you'll get a SR Sun Tour 140mm fork, Shimano's 1x10 drivetrain, and some meaty Schwalbe tires. It's ready for anything, as long as anything doesn't include needing a dropper post. Now, if you've got an extra $350 to spend, there's also the Vita Centiar 29 VR. For 1450 American, you're gonna get a 130mm travel Z2, an 11-speed Shimano drivetrain, and a Brand X dropper post. Ready to send it then, but it's gotta go up against this bike. Norco's Fluid HT1, which retails for 1,500 US dollars, which is $50 more than that Vita Sensier. For that price, you'll get a 120 millimeter X-Fusion fork, you'll get Shimano's 1x12 drivetrain, and you'll get some Tektro stoppers. Looking for something to ride and maybe even race while wearing the Lycra? And no, I'm not gonna make you guys watch me in the sausage suit again, but this bike has me tempted. BMC's $1,600 two-stroke AL1 is more of an entry-level cross-country machine than an all-mountain hardtail. That means less travel, of course. There's a 100-millimeter recon fork up front with a remote lockout and a whole bunch of interesting frame features that we're gonna talk about in the review. Our last hardtail is also our most aggressive one. That's the Rocky Mountain Growler 40, which retails for $16.69. It has a 140 millimeter SR Sun Tour fork and a 64 degree head tube angle, meaning that it should be ready for some aggressive terrain. It's also got a Shimano 12 speed drivetrain and some meaty WTB 2.6 inch tires that should help take the edge off on the downhills. Speaking of taking the edge off, it's time we talk about our five full suspension bikes. Starting with the least expensive of the bunch, Da Vinci's $2,300 Marshall. For that price, you're gonna get a RockShox 35 fork, a deluxe rear shock, and a 12-speed Shimano drivetrain. It's also made at Da Vinci's Canadian factory in Quebec, so of course, we're gonna be comparing it to a whole bunch of poutine and maple syrup. And of course, this bike, the Polygon Siskiyou T8. It's a degree slacker and a degree more expensive at $2,369 US dollars. For that price, you'll get a Fox Rhythm fork, Shimano 12-speed drivetrain, and some four-piston Tektro stoppers. It also gets you this incredible paint job. Now, if black is more your thing, we also have Giant's new Trans X. For $2,500, you're getting 135 millimeters of rear-wheel travel, paired with 150 up front, and it's the only trail bike here with adjustable geometry. And it's also the longest travel bike that we have on test. But I'm not sure if more travel is more better. Next up, we've got the Marin Rift Zone 3. It has 125 millimeters of rear travel and 130 millimeter fork. Like all the other bikes we have here, it's a 29er with an aluminum frame. It retails for 2,849 US dollars. And for that price, you'll get a Marzocchi Z2 bomber fork, you'll get a 12-speed SLX drivetrain, and you'll get four piston brakes. Now, if you've got a bit more money to spend, there's also Ibis's $3,000 Ripley AF that we have on test. The Ripley AF comes with a 130 millimeter Fox rhythm fork with the grip damper, and it's 120 millimeters of rear wheel travel. It's controlled via a DW link suspension system and a Fox float shock. You're also getting a 12 speed drivetrain, Schwalbe tires, and a KS dropper post. And one last thing to mention, this aluminum Ripley AF is a full degree slacker than its lighter and more expensive carbon fiber brother. So those are our 10 test bikes. And next up, let's talk about how we're evaluating them. And a big part of that is figuring out how ready for action they are right out of the box. 
Now the thing with a value-minded trail bike is that if you're not spending a ton of money on a bike, you probably don't want to spend a ton of money right after you buy it. Exactly, and that's why we're going to pay really careful attention to the spec on each of these bikes because if you have brakes that don't work or a fork that doesn't fork, it's not good value, is it? We'll boil down what might need to be upgraded or changed on each of the 10 test bikes. Speaking of changing, one thing we're not doing this time around is installing identical control tires on all of the test bikes. Given that these are value-minded trail bikes, we want to test them how the manufacturers deliver them to you guys, not how they would be if you spent another $250 on overpriced rubber. And another thing to point out, given that none of these are really geared towards racing, we're not doing any time testing this time around. Well, we might not be changing those tires, we are still going to be doing the efficiency test and the impossible climb. But at least I don't have to do the huck to flat. He's usually behind the camera, but that's where Jason Lucas comes in. Sarah, does he know we have a bunch of hardtails? He's been filming us all week, so you think by now he did figure it out. But I really do not envy him that task. We should probably talk about where we're testing. We're here on the beautiful Sunshine Coast, which is a hell of a lot drier than Squamish right now. And the trails, so good. On that note, we believe that it's important to evaluate these bikes on terrain that they were intended for. And that means no triple black diamond runs or 50 foot death senders. Instead, picture natural single track full of rocks and roots to keep us on our toes. I think that just about covers it, Levy. So just like that, welcome to the Pink Bike Field Trip. And don't forget that there's a team of photographers and videographers behind the scene that are working at least 10 times as hard as we are. Probably even harder than that. We have a whole bunch of field trip videos coming. So remember to like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a single one of them. Sarah, let's grab some of these bikes and go for a bike ride. Let's do it. All right.